council meeting, special meeting to Thursday, February 1st at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighting. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. All present. All right. We're now going to have an invocation by Council Member Aaron Lighty. Let's bow our heads. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to be here tonight, Lord. God, we ask that you look after this city, all the people in it. Lord, we ask you bless our first responders, our policemen. And God, just guide this council to help everything we do glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance as a flag at the front today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I think we should wait for our legal counsel before we push forward. Should we wait for our legal counsel before we push forward? Would you want to call her maybe real quick? Oh, here she probably is. No, nope, nope. not her. If so, I'm a little screwed. We're going to wait for Mrs. Stinkler. You know what? You probably got stopped with that file. It doesn't have to around. I just saw that. You want to call her? Do you want to call her? You want to call her? Yeah, she got in. Originally? Yeah, she usually comes on a different Okay, yeah, you might want to give her a call. It's so quiet. It's I know. Crazy. I hate when it gets quiet like that. Yes. Anyone you want to know any good jokes? No. No, you're not. Here, bud. No, no, that's what, that's what I thought happened. So if you're on this ball board, you should be able to come all the way down. And you're still going to see a road close sign, but you can actually go past that and make a sharp right and just do like a big deal. She already tried that. I mean, I'm sure she was like, it's closed because she's a lawyer. She's like, I'm not breaking the law. Turn around. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've got a few people. They have, we were sitting there. We got low. That's what, that's yeah. what they said. Yeah. Do you not you were here when they said that. I'm like, do you not listen? That's what he said. Well, they've been watching him for a long time. Right. Get their own to him. Well, I don't know which one I hear either. What did they get? No, I mean, the bust. Oh, the bust? Yeah. Now, is he your immediate neighbor? No. Uh, okay. no Operation closed. Yeah, we'll see. They even had seven months ago, too. Yeah, but they ain't coming back. Um, yeah. You think? Oh, who's not coming back? The kids. There's no way. The house is like. I think bail is like three grand. Um, yeah. There's lights on over and that. There's something going on. Your parents, your parents are back. She you said four. Yeah, because they arrested mm -hmm. them too. Now, where did they live? Same house? Yeah. They live in the house. 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 Did you see the pictures yeah. inside of that place? The wrong one? Oh, yeah. The wrong one. The pictures inside that house. Every wall was like written on paint and we marker and all that. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm sure we'll be alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, thanks for that. Could be like Nick Clegg in 2010, right? There was probably from Prime Minister David Cameron. He says, if you always say we agree, we'll never disagree on anything. And Pastor Mike's like, I'm tired of this. And then Mike picked it up for his running mate. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going to be at work? Tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to be at Wilson Memorial at 7 30. I gotta be there at six. Mm. How long does it take to get there? To the bay? 15, 20 minutes? 12. Okay, so you drive faster. <laughs> 15 minutes. 
and I was going to work today, and I was like, man, I had so much pressure behind me. I was like, it really hurts. And then it was gone. And I was like, the 30 seconds later, it was like, nosebleed all over. Oh, my. Nice. I was like, no. Nope. Like, tap, I think I got a cut her eye. And I was like, I'm not going to I'm driving all the way up there. Yeah. 1245. You got a dump truck sitting down there, huh? Yeah. We need to ask him about that. Because she said that she would need to be here tonight? No. She recommended that she be here? I know, but that's what her recommendation was. She's the attorney. I'm just going off of her recommendation. I always know when my kids pick them up. Do I? I don't mind waiting for her. Better safe than sorry. That's why we have her. When she sent you an email. No any good jokes with some to be there. Come on, you work with kids. I know, I know. Crazy week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Groundhog Day tomorrow. I know. You gotta watch it. Groundhog's Day. Is it tomorrow? Yeah. It's tomorrow. How many more weeks of winter? <laughs> it's actually it's 24 this year. No. <laughs> this weather is sparkling. It was warmer this morning, I think. It was much warmer. Okay. Ooh, I heard a car noise. Should we all like stand up and like ovation? Oh, well, no, you should stand up. Someone should look at you and you should sit back down. I feel I, I Joe have it. Before. Well, it's all high under the table. Yeah. Where'd they go? Lily's upset. She's like, I have high. Don't worry. That's correct. So she goes on. It's quite all right, Miss Dinkler. Quite all right. I remember Lily. Not every night day you have corn in the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was it 10,000 ton of it? Yes. Thank you. So we're going to move forward now. Uh, action on the minutes. There are none. Communications done tonight. See the manager's report. We do not have that. And comments from members of the public. So, if anyone has anything to say, now is your time. Alrighty. All right. Um, committee reports none tonight. Legislation item number 10. Council nominations and appointments, if passed by a majority vote for the vacancy, council city, council seat. So uh, we'll do what we did with the mayor and vice mayor. We'll have open nominations, and people will submit their nominations. And then we'll vote on each individual up or down. Correct? Yes, ma'am. So council may uh, nominate as many people as they want to, but they then it is council may vote yes for only one nominee. And then it will be from a, um, if a winner, so to speak, is nominated, it will have to be from a majority of all council members. Which is four. You only have one vacancy, yes. You, well, I'm saying the majority is the fourth person, four people. A majority is that four of you yes. will have to vote yes for one nominee. And we may vote for just one single person, or like let's say candidate A gets three votes, candidate A gets three votes, and then there's another candidate, and like let's say we compromise on somebody else. We could all we could vote for as many people as we want, correct? Yeses. No, you may each vote for one person. On that nomination. Yes. Period. Okay. All right. Do I hear nominations? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Becky Strayer to the AT City Council seat. Becky McKenzie. Becky, I'm sorry, Becky McKenzie. <laughs> sorry. Second. All right. Uh, any other nominations from the floor? With the fact that the citizens voted 400 plus for Mr. Shammy, I would like to put his name in nominee. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on 
Oh, Ms. Bar Mrs. Barner. Yeah, sure. All right. Any discussion on any of the candidates that we have placed in the nomination or any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Do I have a second to close nominations? I think that's Mr. Cook closed. And then second. Mm -hmm. All right. Who is the second? Mr. Cox. Any comments, questions, or concerns on any of the nominations? All right, we'll go forward with the first nomination. Just back to McKinney's? Yes, yes ma'am. Mr. Lowry. Which one are we starting with? Becky. Becky? Yes. Okay, Sorry. thank you, yes. Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? No. Vice Mayor Lindsay? No. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. All right, Mr. Tatum. Mr. Lighty, did you vote? Mr. Lighty. Oh, Mr. Lighty, I'm very sorry. Yes. All right, All right. so now that's. Three, three, three. Three. Is eight. Did the nomination fail then? Yeah, three nominations, right? Yeah. Two nominations. Two. Two nominations. Yes, and then we lost the next one. Okay. Okay. And this one is an open vote. We can vote yes or no on this person as well. You vote on all of your oh. nominations. All right. Okay. Any discussions on Mr. Shammy? All right. Mrs. Berner. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. I really prefer to see Mrs. McKenzie on the council because I think that it'd be representative for the demographics of our city. And it really, I really don't like this idea, but I will vote yes for Mr. Shammy because he does have the 400 votes, but I really wish that we had the votes for Ms. McKenzie. Mr. Lowry? No. Mr. Lowry? No. Mr. Paul? Yes. Four to two. What was the two. Mm -hmm. They don't have to guess what I wrote in their to vote on each one. They can three to three. He is lit Well, we've done that before in the past. They, we voted. Both vote. Everyone voted. Yeah, we voted for two people from Mr. Lowry, and Mr. Lighty. I voted. You were voting. You voted yes for two candidates, Mr. Mayor. Yes, which we've done in the past. So has everyone else up there voted for two candidates? Yes. They went through and voted yes or no to Becky, and then they went to yes or no to Mr. Shannon. If you, if you, if you all vote, as I explained in the beginning, I understand what you're saying. You can't, you can't all vote yes and no. You can't vote separately for all candidates. Then you could have a majority for all three candidates. You could have a majority vote. For all three candidates, you're only filling one that's seat. That's how I took it. That's why I didn't nominate Matt. But my question was with Mr. Lighty, we voted yes for Mr. In particular, in this case, Mr. Lighty. Bill and I voted for Mr. Hall when Mr. Lighty was appointed, and then turned around and voted for Mr. Lighty, and that wasn't a problem then. I, I wasn't. We'd have to go back and check the records to see if I was here. I, I don't recall. I don't recall being asked to give any legal advice to oversee the vote for the vacancy for Mr. Lighty. Okay. Um, I know you asked me to be here to oversee this. Well, you need, at your recommendation, yes. You need, you need to have a majority 
for the candidate to, to fill the vacancy. So as we work through this, and I'm going to ask you to start this process again, okay. because it's been voided. All right. Listen, um, I would ask all council to listen to these instructions. And I'm gonna give you, just by way of example, am I, am I speaking loud enough for everybody? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you all, and I'm just gonna pick, let's just say candidate A, if one, two, three, four voted yes for candidate A, and you two voted no, we would have a majority of council voting yes for candidate A. All right. Then if we had candidate B that you nominated, one, two, three, four voted yes for candidate B. and one, two, voted no for candidate B, you would have a majority for candidate B. And then if one, two, three, four voted yes for candidate C, and one, two, voted no for candidate C, you would have a majority for candidate C. You would have three candidates that are top Okay? All right. So your process is to select a candidate. But one had three votes, one had four votes. So, but if, you, if we will redo it, no. but Mr. Lowry has a comment. May I? Yes, sir. Mistake, sir. If I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. So, are you saying that we as council members can only vote, period, for like for one candidate? Like, we, let's say, just for example, me and Aaron vote for candidate A. On candidate B, we cannot vote at all on candidate B, whether it's yes or no. Is that no, true? you would you would have to vote no. Okay, so so if you give a yes vote to candidate A, Can't give on yes. on candidate B, you cannot give a yes vote to. Correct. Okay. Okay. So the process. okay. That's you right. have to select your candidate, and then if this process does not come out with a majority candidate, then if you if council does not meet again before your thirty days are up to try to come to some agreement to come to a majority selection for a candidate through appointment and vote, then that your charter and your rules then move to mayor appointment within I seven days uh, from the 31st day. Okay. So a yes vote for per all. council member for one candidate only, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Gotcha. All right. Do I have nominations from the floor? <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. <laughs> I make a motion to... Oh, I'm totally confused here. So you can only vote yes for one for one thing. So how I voted yes for Mrs. McKenzie and... Which we did. Mm -hmm. No. no. <laughs> I voted for both, but all right. You voted yes for both candidates. You voted the okay. entire process. All right. Okay, so we revote. Yeah, we're gonna re nominations. Re nominate. Okay. I think it's gonna go the same way last time uh, with the nominations, but Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Becky McKenzie. Second. All right. First nomination. Second nomination. Is there another? I will make a motion to, for Mr. Shammy. Second. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Then we need a motion to close nominations. So moved. Second. All right, nominations are now closed. We will be voting on Mrs. McKenzie. Any discussion first? I agree. I think it's important that we get a woman's voice up here on council. I think that is very important to have, but I do not want to make the appointment, which has not, never been done by a mayor. My research has never appointed a member when the, when the council does not have the majority and the major, or the almost majority here agrees with one candidate. So I will be voting for Mr. Shammy. But Becky, I really, really hope that you do run in two years. I think we really need your voice. I really do. And I'm sincere in that. I think that you will be a fantastic councilwoman when you win in two years. Ready? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowry? <coughs> yes, for Becky. Yeah. Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? 
No. Vice Mayor Lindsay? No. Mayor Reynolds? No. Just, Mr. Light? Yes. That is two to four. Now we move on to Mr. Jamie. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? No. Mr. Lowry? No. Mr. Cobb? Yes. That is a majority, four to two. Okay. All right, so now we move into the swearing in of the new council member. That's you, up to you, Ms. Berner. Okay. Mr. Shammy, will you please come up? Mr. Shammy, Okay. Do I just put my hand in there? Yep, sir. Right there, sir. Yeah, you can come up here. You got five dollars? You can just always use the ask if you want to. I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and the Charter and Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. And that I will faithfully, uh, faithfully honestly, honestly, and impartially discharge, and impartially discharge the, duties of my office, the duties of my office to the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Do they sign now? They are yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Congratulations. As we go um, through 
this Frito process is that actually have been appointed. We've done our research. Right. 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 Mr. Lindsay. 
we have had training and travel expenses. Uh, well, when we go to, uh, I know when I was newly elected, I went to Columbus for three days for training. I think it was over a weekend, but I don't remember. Uh, there's been other training courses that council uh, can go to. Uh, some of them, Mr. Bridge, attends for the council members. That would be underneath his. Can you tell me what that is? I don't remember. Yeah, that. Sunshine Law training, I am allowed to attend on your behalf. Um, okay. However, I've already approached two of the new council members about a conference to go down in Cincinnati for a newly elected official, so I'll be asking Mr. Shammy about that as well. So, in the past, you're right, Mr. Mayor, council's never really done anything. This administration, we kind of get them to go do things because it helps out with our, our state law. Okay. Especially with the sunshine law stuff. Um, historically, though, $1,500 is, is, you guys haven't touched that, you know? Um, right now, I mean, last year, it looks like you, we didn't get anything for you. 16, I think, is a year that Mr. Lindsay had went to the SERP conference. Yes. I mean, Ms. Harris and Columbus over a few, a few work days. Okay. Um, it is probably room for cutting, although I would recommend probably going below. Yes, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bridge, this fifteen hundred does this include gas re fuel reimbursement for you? Is no, I'm not a council. This is only for council. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, uh, oh, however, so yeah. Mr. Lindsay, when he drove good, to, good question. and I don't think you put in for it, but if, if, if you can, like if you drive to Columbus, you're allowed to put in for miles reimbursement. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong. No, you're fine. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, would council feel maybe cutting that five hundred dollars? I mean, I know nickel and diming, but. If Any savings been here? If we're right. going to start nickel and diving, I think this is a good place to start. All right. So, do you think the thousand? Mom, we'll give it the thousand. Mr. Bridge, since you're the city manager and you think thousands okay, as long as we're not going lower. I mean, we'll, we can just limit to how many. I, mean, I don't see you guys going to come close to a thousand. Okay, I'm fine with a thousand. All right, Mr. Yes. Chami. Yeah, Mr. I'm, I'm good with that part. Uh, all right. Is that the consensus, sir? It, it feels like it is. Okay. And then uh, uh, I had to, so does the council have any other questions on this? What you about the camcorder operation? I think we brought that about $3,000. Is there some background there? Excuse me, I'm sorry. The camcorder. We put a little in there for leeway. We don't know how many special meetings we're going to have in a year, so we kind of like to have a little bit of cushion there. I, um, and we get charged every time we set this up, and they have to process the videos on YouTube, and that's what all that comes out. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, and then, again, just because it's allocated for four thousand dollars doesn't mean you're going to get four thousand dollars spent. Mr. Mayor, but you can look at your history. That's why I would definitely look at your history. You that's why I went back, you know, clear to fourteen, so you guys can see every year how much you spent. Do you think three thousand? We'll just keep it. I, I'd say just keep it. Yeah. What's it going to hurt? You're not using it if we don't have it. That's just my opinion. Okay. Uh, how does everyone else feel about the camcorder? I, I would like to see it cut down to about two thousand dollars, maybe oh. twenty three hundred. Oh. The, uh, the the highest one we had was twenty one thirty nine in twenty fifteen. Okay. So. And the rest of it's been at fifteen or below, or fifteen fifty and below. So I think two thousand dollars would be enough for that. I think uh, we're, I think we're already I, at more meetings this year yeah. than we uh, have any time before. Uh, just that while well, I have done some of the recordings, just set and flash even first set it still, even though it doesn't look as professional when it's not moving. Yeah. But there's been a few times that they have not been able to stand behind the camcorder and move it. So you're probably looking at I think there's two meetings where they did not attend and we didn't get billed for for those. Okay. Mr. Mayor. So, oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm gonna let Mr. Lindsay finish. I, I just wanted to see if the rest of the, rest of the council thought about lowering that to two thousand, or is there another figure? I, I think four thousand dollars is entirely too much for that, based on the history. Based on the history. Okay, I'll go last because I'm the mayor. So. Just a question. So if we set it at two thousand and we need three, we've got to come back and redo this, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm at three thousand. That was the same as my question. Yeah. I mean. Okay. I'm fine with me personally. I'm fine with leaving it there because you're not going to okay. use it if we don't have it. Can I interject for a second? I do apologize. I think every single year we've allocated four thousand dollars, and you see what we end up spending. So yeah. There's a benefit to having a little bit of cushion in there because, like I have stated, if you guys come close to that, and we have to do more legislation. You're also increasing your legal costs because now our attorney has to review that ordinance that we reappropriate. We have to do two of those: yeah. to appropriate the appropriations and then do their expenditure. So there's a yin and a yang to what you take. Yeah, that there truly is. You so, know, but again, just because it's allocated, we're not 
we're not going to spend that. So out of compromise, you think three thousand? We haven't gotten close to that. Or do you want to keep it at four? I mean, I was thinking three thousand actually. Three, three. three. And you There's think three's okay? Uh, and you think three's okay? I think, I, yeah. I mean, look at the history of numbers. Yeah. Three. How, how do you guys feel about it? Three. It's a three. It's like a compromise thing. Three. Three. You guys good? I'm good with three. If these two are, yes. If you, if you three are good with it. Three thousand dollars for this. Any other comments, questions, or concerns about uh, page two? No. Page, we'll go with page two. On to page three. So, Mr. Bridge. Yeah, this is getting after expense. Um, I had voiced my uh, concern about having some staff meetings help. Um, so, basically, when we first did this budget, there was a full time executive assistant in there. However, uh, going through the last round that I did before I submitted this account, so I did remove that position 100%. Uh, so, again, there will be no help from you directly, nor the, uh, the administrative staff. Okay. And that is because the general fund still sees that net difference due to the 150 transfer from the, to the water tower. And also, we have the GHP come right there as well. That's true. Um, so, um, and then also, too, um, well, I guess it's not also too, but you know, with slashing that, we also reduce the fringe benefit. So um, that sixty thousand dollars is just a it's um, seventy five percent of my pay. Um, I think moving forward with this um, budget, I and mean, the city has historically not done that. You have managers here that are only paid out of the general fund, namely me and Colleen, and that is proposed to change in this budget. Okay. Um, myself and Colleen specifically should be paid out of just about every fund that you have because we manage to Let's fund. spread the money around. Yeah. So to add the general fund, actually, we twenty five percent of our funds, my new salary and Mrs. Harris's salary, and we did put it into the police levy fund. Now, I fully expect that to be analyzed by council. I fully expect it to be removed, but we, I did it so you guys can see what the benefit is to splitting out your payment of your department heads. Um, so right now, again, this wage is only 75% of it. You'll find my other 25% of police levy funds. Um, we are able to put it back on the fire levy fund, and you can put it on any fund that is managed by the finance director and myself. Okay. Again, the city has historically never done it. So what that means is that your general fund picks up the curve. And again, the city has relied heavily on their general fund to pick up this slack. And, um, but moving forward, um, given that we should probably operate our budget the most fiscally sound we can, I think we will have to start paying your manager and your finance director out of a plethora of different funds. Uh, but again, I did slash my help. Um, this would be the third consecutive year that I did slash that, so the city would be able to have somewhat of a better balance in the general fund. Um, everything else is up for negotiation, so I'll leave it up for you guys to go through those line items and make <coughs> recommendations. Recommend David changes. That's Council? Right. Mr. Sorry. Yes, thank you, sir. Mr. Bridge, on your, uh, let's see here, where are we at here? Yeah. Your uh, travel, uh, your training, travel, and transportation, $1,200. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's just for you. That is just for me. Is that fuel? Is that a fuel allowance? That, if I were going to get reimbursed with fuel, that would be coming through there. And historically, I've never put in a lot for fuel reimbursement. This year, I will. I do not get a reimbursement on my car. Um, so for the, ever since I've become city manager, I've been putting wear and tear on my own vehicle and not charging the city to do so. Uh, moving forward, you will see I already have a blanket open for this year. Probably got about 80 miles into it. Um, since I don't get that car allowance, I will be putting in for more gas reimbursements this year. Okay. So the 1200 is the max, it, I mean, if it was just for mileage. No, I can do it out of training, travel, transportation, but I also have 300 in fuel down there too. Okay. Is that enough? Um, I'll make it work. Well, is that enough? Not making yeah. it work. <laughs> is that enough? Here's the thing. I know that you brought. I know you've talked. We've all. I don't know if you've ever talked with them, but you're using your own personal car to drive to Columbus. I, I don't think it's right for you to uh, to do that and not get reimbursed for fuel at a minimum. If you guys want to raise it, that's great. I, mean, I think I, that's completely fair. I, I, yeah. What would you recommend for that? I, mean, I, I, I don't think driving. right. I don't think we're doing anyone a disservice by by oh. reimbursing you for I for, for mileage. I totally agree. I would recommend. You knock the office supplies down twenty five bucks. You knock the operation supplies down twenty five bucks. You knock the small tools down hundred. You add hundred and fifty back on. 
and then operations supplies, you said knock down 25? I would knock down your office supplies, so I don't have to come close to using that. I've got a stack of pins and everything else I can get. I can make that work. Drop it to what? Uh, take it off, just take it down to 100. Okay. My operational supplies, I would put at 250. 250. My small tools and minor equipment, I would drop 100, put it down to 400. Question, Mr. Bridge. Yes, sir. On the small tools and, and minor equipment, exactly what is that? What does that entail in, in, in your office? If I need a new mouse on my laptop, that's a tool. If I need okay. a camera, I need a tool. If I need a ruler, you know, if I need a um, need voice a ruler, recorder, you know, voice recorder machine. I mean, that's small tools. Okay. Mine. Okay. You said knock that one down $100 to yeah. 400 And then crank up field of well, five? Um, how much did we slash off the other ones? I'm trying to maintain. Um, the 100, uh, 25. Then take it to full up, fuel up to 450. 450, okay. I, I'm just going to throw this out to council and see what they think. The I know you do a lot of driving. Uh, we've had conversations about it. And I'm sure you and uh, Mr. Larry has had conversations about it. I would not be opposed to throw another 50 in there. I don't know if we can cut it someplace else in here or from another fund to transfer it to him to give him an even $500 on that for his fuel plus the $1,200 uh, the, uh, the 1200 for travel, transportation, and training. Well, then I would look at maintenance of equipment and I would slash that if you're going to have more. more slash that another 50? I would slash that probably another 100 and still give me 50. That way well, you're coming up with $25 back in your own fund. Historically, I've never used a lot of maintenance equipment. The past few years, I haven't done anything. So you say take that one to 300? Small tools and equipment? No, up the, it's the uh, under contractual maintenance of equipment. Oh, 450 to, to 350? Yeah, I'm going to miss one. We'll review when you're okay. done. This is what I got. We got 100 at office supplies. And while we talk about that, okay. Mrs. McKenzie, you raised your hand. I mean, 250 at operational. Mm -hmm. Becky, 450 at fuel. you raised your hand. And then 400 at small tools. And then oh. maintenance of equipment. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Randy and Colleen, how many hours typically do you work each week? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Oh, buddy. <laughs> okay. Way more than 40. So, and how long have you both been to Rockdale? So, maybe we're taking that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A long time. Over three years. Mm -hmm. So, you, you all get a salary, you only get paid for 40 hours, but you're probably working like 50, 60 hours a week. Some more than that. Because you don't have an administrator? Um, I think, uh, you want the honest truth? Yes. I think, I'll be honest with you, when I get there during the day, it is constant interruption. I'm not saying that a negative thing. Okay. You know, it could be someone coming in, emails, phone, people coming in asking questions. It could be a business owner, it could be a new resident. It could be a plethora of reasons. They're going to have a meeting with one of the council members. Right. So a lot of times what happens is I have to take my work home. Right. And I go home and I sit at my, I mean, I send emails out at 12, 30, 1 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. You know, um, but again, I am naturally like a, a late person anyway. So um, that doesn't mean that you should be working. Right, but at the same time too, I recognize that the city doesn't have the funds needed yet. Yeah. And it is my own choice to do that. Um, is it something that maybe we'll be able to work towards in the future? I think in the future, yeah. I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to see us get past the next round of this fire levy. I'd like to see us get past the second round of the police levy, and then you kind of start adjusting that stuff. And just. If I'm correct, we can't give you any more pay increase because you've hit the cap of the union set you on, correct? Uh -huh. Yeah. So he gets paid the most, but still, he, the most he can. Yeah. But it still works like way more than he gets paid. Yeah, it's, right. it's really bad. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I wish that that cap wasn't there so that we could give you a little bit more, but mm -hmm. just want to make sure that was clear. Mr. Hall. I don't know if this is the most appropriate time to bring this up. <coughs> Many of you have heard me talk about hiring a professional grant, or grant writer to have on your staff. <laughs> Uh, just my study that I've you know, done in the Miami Valley, the amount of revenue that they've been able to bring in, they not only pay their salary, but sure. this is where we could potentially, I know there's a lot of other fat and other mm -hmm. things that could be cut, but you know, is, is that something that you know, potentially not only would bring revenue, but maybe bring you guys an assistant or something like that? I mean, it's definitely something that's popped my mind. If we're going to bring an assistant in, they're going to definitely be, you know, looking at that grant aspect of it, you know, um, but 
it's finding the right person to do the job first off, and then second off, you gotta have the money. So you're looking for a specific skill set of someone who has an executive experience, and then also that grant writer experience. And you know, grants, it, it, it's, there's a formula for writing these grants. You know, it, there truly is. You know, and we we go out, we, we we truly do. Sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't. We see a lot of our success with grants right here at the playground. To be honest with you, you know, we, we truly do. Um, Steve, our fire chief, was in for grants. I, a couple of years ago, put in for the grant to do some things with the sheriff's office, and you know, and the grants are just ultra competitive. But there is a need. There is, because you hit one or two a year, and you're right. They pay for your salary right off the bat. They have to do this. So it's, it's crossed our mind. It's just finding that right person with the right skill set. Uh, but first and foremost, I'm not going to put that much energy into it if I know we're not going to do it because of the budget. Does that make sense? Right. I don't know if that's something I can into the budget. Well, the budget right now is operating on a net difference in the general fund of two hundred twenty-one thousand dollars. So I don't think this is the year to do that. Because once you do that, then you just make that negative balance even more. Would it be possible maybe this summer? Um, I, I work in law office. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I, I have a kid intern. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I, don't make it quick. I don't have time for interns. In, in turn, I tried. I tried before, and you know, some, and especially with some of the stuff we do, because some they can't see, even though it's a government entity, you know. Um, and you have to be. Yeah, I can't let an intern sit there and read my emails and have an executive attorney client privilege on. That's just not necessary. You know, so um, that's something I'll look at. But what I've learned from interns is that you spend most of your time teaching them. We don't have the staff to do that. I'm not trying to sound negative, but it's, it's the truth. You know, we don't have, you know, uh, like when I was a cleaning director, we had someone come in, and it was easy because I dealt with that. The city manager didn't do it. She was busy doing other things, you know. Um, it, it's it's a tough when you're already short-staffed to do it because you're really just retraining someone. And I don't, we need someone in there hitting the ground or up, to be honest with you. But historically, I'm not, in terms of not my uh, favorite cup of tea. Sure. Um, any other comments, questions, or concerns on this page? So you, you're so you're, oh, go ahead. Yes. One more. Just realistically, and I know you're always trying to save money, and I appreciate that. So for, this is the fuel's bumped up to 500. Yes, sir. Realistically, and I know that changes from you know year to year. How far into the year will 500 dollars get you? I don't know because I've never put it into it before. We'll have to see if it, if it's getting close. We'll have to come back and just do okay. legislation. Please do. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, he was willing to cut other sections, you know, to make up for it. So right. I think that's really important. Yeah. Thank you. No, if, thank you for your concern. I appreciate it. If you get close to the $500, can you tap into the $1,200 or not? Or yes. Is that strictly we, for no, we, we training? No, we can take it. We can take it. Because it's still training it's travel. Travel. It, would, it, would be, it would give you $1,700. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Sure. Exactly. You know, so okay. we have two items to choose from, you know. Okay. So if one gets low, you know. And but I do. I, I do want to go to more this year because they are some of them if you pick the right ones are packed full of good information you know the ones they do every year they're kind of competitive yeah. you know but there are some good ones out there and i have never went somewhere to where i'm going to get a hotel that's just i don't do that <laughs> namely because i want to go home at night because i have a dog but you know so i'm very responsible with my travels and what what which ones i go to it's just historically i've never put in for reimbursement all that much i have before but not every single time okay and go ahead I, are we still on the Yes, area? manager. So did we take fuel up to 500? Yes, sir. Yes. Did we knock down maintenance of equipment? Yes. Or yes, what? sir. 400. 400. Because you got maintenance equipment at four, members to do some publication that kind of needs to stay, be stay, stay the same, Austin. Awesome. Operational supplies at 100. I mean, office supplies 100. Operational supplies 250. Fuel 500. Small tools 400. Is that where you're on? That's what I have. Yep. In there too. Audience, is everyone okay with that? Yep. Okay. Now, I had a question on capital outlay, if you don't mind. <laughs> 3000 just was wondering. Uh, 3000 for a new laptop. Oh, and a okay. new phone. Well, I, um, after my phone I have now, and Mr. Kitko can equate to this, has been a bear for the past like, seven months, maybe even close to eight. Is it a flip phone? No, it's not a flip phone. <laughs> um, over the weekend, Mr. Reynolds called me twice back to back. I didn't even get it until I restarted my phone. So, yeah. Um, it's on its last leg. I've kind of held off as long as I can with it. Um, I would have had a phone earlier, but we can't get a hold of our Verizon government rep, and unfortunately that's what we go through. Um, my laptop is getting old. It's still functional. Um, but just in case something goes wrong with this year, I would like to have the funds in there. Um, $3,000 is a little bit high for a laptop nowadays, um, but our phone, i got to get the phone cost in there. And I definitely don't want to have to go 
cheap on a laptop and have to get one another year. Oh, oh that's how you, so, have, you have HP. Yeah, oh, the, la the one I have now, I, I spent, I think, $800. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a very good machine. I'm going to have one. Yeah, I, after we had met today about the, how the work session would work, and I saw your, your laptop in your phone, you had to put your little zigzag combination a few times. I think it's warranted for that 3000 So um, I would be more open to go down a little bit on that, I and mean, that's up for council. Um, this is negotiation, so I would be comfortable with maybe 2500 if council's okay with that. I I would keep it at three. You want go ahead, Bill. <laughs> I think we need to keep it at three. Yeah. Uh, I've been in there, and he's wanted to take a sledgehammer to his computer, <laughs> and he wanted to throw his phone in the trash can. And I um, don't know for sure, but I'm sure you have seen what I've seen. And uh, I think if he can get a laptop and a computer for three grand or less. Oh, I'm not buying a computer. I'm using just a laptop. Well, the laptop's yeah. right, man. Gotcha. Not, not a regular desktop, but a laptop. If you can get, uh, yeah, it's still a computer. If you can get a laptop or a phone for 3000 or less, hats off to you. Because the one I looked at, 3000 wouldn't touch it. That's why get, I didn't get Apple. Uh, well, let's go ahead and no, pass on that before we start changing our mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so next, is, are we good? Good. Yep. Uh, we got the miscellaneous down there. Miscellaneous is just that catch-all. It's 100 bucks right now. You never know. Um, I, I didn't use it last year. Oh, in feel. 16, I used 50. Yeah, right. So, uh, what do you guys want to do with that? I think we keep it. Leave it. That could be another hundred for fuel if that were to pop up and we were to start getting closer. You know. Cool. Thank you. Perfect. Throws this phone to hey, break real quick, laptop. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I just wanted to thank the few citizens that did stay for this, even uh, though it's boring. Oh, Johnson, why he leaves? Never mind. I take it back. <laughs> Good night, John. All right. Okay. Right. Great. All right. Mr. Mayor, take it on if we fast forward yeah. to uh, page six and then come back. Yeah, we come. Law director. And, uh, we oh, that. yes. If we have any to cut, we will not answer. There might be some up front. Uh, I want to get that at home because you can get home to your family. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, we're going to skip to page six for the sake of Mrs. Dinkler's time. Yes. So. Okay, so historically, um, I think we allocated last year 60000 so we just came underneath that. Um, I did bump it up a little bit this year because we have a lot going on. Um, so I will leave it up for council. If you have any questions for Ms. Dinkler, she can answer some things, but since we are in open session, she might not be able to answer everything. Um, so if council wants to have any discussion on raising that or the, the lowering it. Council? I'd say leave it alone. I, I would too. Yeah. What do, you, what do you guys feel? Bill, you want to go, for, go, go ahead, sir. Page before beauty. Oh, listen to this. Go ahead. Yeah. The, the only suggestion I would have on this, if we get close to using all of this, let us know before we are there. So if we need to bump it, we can. Because oh, I know we have some litigation going on. I, we have new council members. We have. We have. We have. We have a lot. So I would hate to, you know, uh, use up the seventy-five thousand, and then something happens, and she said, "Well, I'm going to do it because I'm going to get paid now." <laughs> I don't think she would do that. I think she's more ethical than that. Sure. But I, I really would want that fund to run out, and not on wood. Maybe we don't even have to use all of it. It'd be nice if we get by twenty-five thousand. It would be fantastic. I don't think it's going to happen this year. <laughs> Mr. Lowry. You don't have a coupon day or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a coupon day or something, like 25% off of services. <laughs> no, so. Or on the tourist. I thought that was funny. Okay, first, th that was not funny, but okay. <laughs> or, or two for one. Wait one second. Wait one second. How about we let Ms. Nico continue on doing what she's doing? Because she's very nice to the city when it comes to her invoice. So okay. We'll just, we'll, we'll just say thank you for that. Serious question. Yeah, yes. I, I do have a serious question. Okay. And I don't know if you want me to bring it up here. I will, or we can do it privately. Yeah, some other. You're having questions about it. I don't know, man. You, okay. Um, sorry, I got teared up on her laughing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a project that I want you and is going to involve an attorney looking into. Mm -hmm. And I know you kind of tried to hold me off on this. I really want to look forward to it. And you said that would probably shoot up attorney fees. Oh, it will. So. <laughs> I think we heard you. <laughs> 
Oh, we put a double the speed in. Well, do you know where? Hang on, I'll, 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 I'll bring it up. Oh, yeah. It, they, Look at that for the wine. Exactly. Confirm what I told you. We will have to get a special attorney for that. I just need to have to work with that attorney as well. Oh, no, no, no. Well, well, that's just so should we budget more then? That's what I'm saying. That's actually a really good question. Uh, Wait, wait, wait one second. Because they, I mean, my opinion, they've got our address. New Cross supports them, water, sewer. Mm -hmm. they need to, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I do know Can I make a recommendation? I feel like you won't get on the phone because I can't hear about this today. Too. Oh, okay. I, I think what we talked about is down the road. It could be this year, but it's not going to be in the next few months. No. So I say we just address that later on. Okay. And then if we need to come back and add more money to this, then that's when we address that. Okay. That right. makes sense. Is that okay with you? That's fine. I just, I mean. It's still on my radar. Actually. I still, I, st I really want to look into it this year. Sure. Seriously. We talked about it. Already. Okay. Yeah, today, like, I, he wanted to talk about how the meeting would run, and I was like, what about this piece of land here? Right. So, uh, yeah. Because anytime you say that word in public, it just gets. It, yeah. It, 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 it's bummed out of shape. Well, I'll be honest with you, we had a meeting a couple years ago at uh, Meadowview Groves, and I just became city manager, and one of the township trustees had caught wind because I said, I think long-term the city's going to want to annex, and I was just speaking long-term goals for the city, and it didn't turn out to be a very good ODOT meeting that day. So the moment you say that you're going to start that, it's going to cause an immediate, yeah. well, I'm sure. immediate ripple effect. But I, so, think it's, I think it's the right move for us. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I'm sorry, Charter Review Committee. In, in any time? It's every five years. It's every five years. Every before, five years. We're, we're due. due. We're due. We haven't uh, done anything with it yet. And so, I'm going to recommend that we appoint a Charter Review Commission shortly. Ethan. Yes, sir. There are quite a few that? things that were held over okay. I'm just curious. previous administrations that the citizens did not pass that need to be passed. Right. The Charter yes. has there's several like points that need there's to be upgraded. Yeah. If they're so supportive of our town, they need to be in it. So, yeah, it's every five. We're about to do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, a couple hundred bucks or something. 13 was the last. So, it's going to be due this year? Yeah, I'm going say that. But costly. Charter reviews. They are. How costly? I know I haven't done one for you. It's almost what else can be placed on the ballot, but it can be time consuming. Well, we'll just have to track it and then we'll take it from there. Because I think we got a good cushion on that legal thing to, like, like I said, three months down the road, we see it, we need whatever. We can we okay. readjust. All right, so <laughs> no increases, no, hopefully no decreases. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Have you ever sought for this work? I'm sorry? Have we ever sought pro bono? Sought pro bono or? Sought pro bono. Well, that means like have an like attorney. Three lawyers. Yeah. The, the, the very rich firms, man, you know what I'm talking about. I Have mean, we ever sought pro bono, pro bono work? Yeah, pro bono work through the bar is just like anything. For someone to do pro bono work for the city? Yes, man. Just, uh, like maybe for a special product, like a, a real property attorney that sure. they, who I would want to do an annexation and stuff. Oh, I'm not aware of anyone that does pro bono work for political For cities? No. All right. Just curious. All right. Cities yeah. are really attractive. Do you know what you're talking about? I don't know. I, I think there, there may be some interest if you if you maybe just reach out to Dayton Bar Association and say we're a small city with a very fixed income. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm very I'm I'm very involved in the Dayton Bar Association. So I can assure you that attorneys do not do for political subdivisions. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's Is it an ethical thing? There's a there is a high demand for pro bono work that goes unmet for people in need. Um, you know, for people that, that fall in uh, in the gaps that, that don't have enough money that need. Right, I'm just thinking like a specialist attorney that there isn't people maybe in the public or some you know, major you know, property construction, you know, legal suits and things. I, I would think that would be the type of pro bono attorneys you not a domestic attorney or a criminal attorney, you know, something that's a little more. That's 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 on, all right, Ms. Tinkler, I think we're good with you. With all we're paying you. Yeah. So we're going back? Yes, yeah, so we're going to go backwards to the back. To four. four. To four. Uh, and I got fine for it. That's a wrap. I really think that's a great idea. Thank 
Yeah, I've been I've been asking about it for a couple of years now. He's like, oh, let's let's wait. All right, so we'll jump back to page let's let's seven. Let's do it. Four. All right, finance. Miss Harris. Thank you. Um, you want to no. Your finance your wages you're you're looking at Ms. Harris. Uh, who else is under that percent of page? Do we have that? Seventy five percent of me, hundred percent of our tax administrator, hundred percent of our finance clerk, and hundred percent of our cashier. So we have four and three quarters people uh, in uh, the wages. It's right. not just me. Oh, your tape stops. Oh, it's gone. I didn't pay attention to that. That thing's still going, right? Yes, it's still going. Then oh, just thought she was like, oh, 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 oh. we got two forms of that. Okay. All right. Uh, your overtime wages, we need to keep those in there just because one of the hour and ladies may be taking some time to close out the door. We have to pay them overtime for the union contract. Okay. Uh, and along goes with French benefits. So uh, I'll leave it up to council to discuss anything below, <coughs> including training, travel, and transportation. Um, I know historically we haven't hit that four thousand um, dollars, um, but the training, travel, and transportation actually go in line with the capital. Um, please, if you can look at the capital improvements, you'll see a very high portion for this year. And the finance department historically don't do to big capital purchases. However, um, we are in need of what they call the what is it? The, 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 the upgrade of us. The, the, the name for it. Uh, what is it? It is. Um, Virtual margin. Virtual margin. So basically, we want to upgrade our software to the VIP version of it. That's going to allow Ms. Harris to do things at a much quicker rate and do things more efficiently. That purchase is about $40,000. That is a much needed addition to the finance department. It will streamline a lot of things in there and hopefully free up things on her plate and also the other people that she helps out with accounts payable. Um, we have been wanting to get this now for about two years. I think last year we took it out on our own, didn't we? You know, um, now the general funds is good to go. This is a long-term investment that you will need for your uh, software, and that includes your tax software as well, and your water building software. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. Lindsay. So you can refer to the Mr. Bridge, you said that software is about $40,000? It's listed, it's listed yeah. in your CIP. It's actually 65000 That includes maintenance, though, too. So you have to do that, and you have to sign a maintenance, problem, a maintenance agreement with it as well. Um, but also, please look out, because we have to do a government mandate, which is GSB 34. Um, we also have to do what we call our fixed asset inventory. And this software has also helped out with that. I think, um, who was it in our office today? Mr. Lindsay, you were in there. I talked about the fixed asset on the budget. The city has been the core historically, um, similar to the water towers for the past 30 plus years, didn't do anything with the water towers. Well, the city has never once um, um, listed and maintained online their uh, or on a database sheet and valued the infrastructure and the capital that we have. So that's your water lines, that's your streets, that's your sewers, that's everything that we have. That's your capital assets. We get dinged every year in our state of life because we don't track our capital assets and we don't value those capital assets. This is a specialized printer, it's a dot printer for our, for our water bills and our, that's for your um, checks and all that stuff. The printer has a whole lot of size. Uh, again, we have historically not got one of those. I think Mr. Who was in the other day? I'll show you guys that printer. Was that, was, that was back at the beginning of the month. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's the printer. And again, we have always put that like too. Right now it's working, but it could go at any point in time. Okay. And that is, and that's, we have to get that. If we don't get that, we're not going to have this. So, so, I'll go ahead. I just said so. It's kind of sad. Well, that includes all your direct costs. I have one, two sure. fast questions. Sure, if you absolutely. Uh, it's probably a necessity, but I just haven't worked its why. For medical insurance, we've increased from about 41000 to ninety-seven, And I'm just asking why. Like, sure. If it's needed, then it's needed. No, thank I'm you for the observation, because actually we had negotiated a cheaper rate in health care. Right. We, we did. We are, yeah. uh, we are seeing a cheaper rate. However, what we did is that's part of the $109,000 payout for JHP. So that's what I was thinking. So we took that up. Instead of the general fund paying 100%, the water portion is going to pay their employee portion. So okay, you good. see that increase. Sixty-four hundred dollars an employee 
whichever 17 employees. For the debt recovery? For the debt recovery. <coughs> now, hopefully, we get that back, and that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. Okay, good. And then my second question was, I'm guessing this is delinquent, delinquent tax collection fees, but it's uh, line 101, 1400, 53. Yes, it is. Okay. That's what it is. And is that, do we pay that to Cleveland, or just we have this it there? This is our new in-house collection. Okay. That we were trying to get started last year when we contracted out to CCA. Okay. That leaves our tax administrator starting to collect for non-filers and non-payers. So we can collect that in-house if we haven't been able oh. to do it for years. Uh -huh. with Thanks, so that's an estimated, because we haven't gone through the motions yet. Yeah, because I was like, I was just wondering, cause it, there was zero, zero, then there was $55, and mm -hmm. so I was just wondering, but if we're going to do it. Out, cause I, I didn't want to abbreviate anything on this, so I overlooked that one. So I yeah. will actually type it all out. I was assuming that's what it was. It is, exactly. So, uh, no. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Lindsay. The two thousand dollars on the doing put tax fees. Uh, is that for like for her to take to court, or and she would do that in small claims court then? So that would not involve the city attorney, correct? In small claims. We're going to start with small claims, and then we'll progress. We'll get it. I'm sure this year. That's all we're intending on doing is getting that started. You'll be able to do a lot if you're doing it in small claims because that's well, all you're Well, they're about $50 a, a person. That's like $50 to a piece, so unless you've got like well, well, there's a long, five, six hundred of them. Or, uh, uh, yeah, a long, for the longest time, we didn't know yeah, who was filing, so yeah. that, 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 I think we should keep that. Now, now the upside of this is you see that expenditure coming out, but that 2000 expenditure could very well turn into a revenue. Yeah. yeah. You know, so revenue. there's a flip side to that as well, so. Yeah, I think we should keep it. And you all agree with that? Mm -hmm. I have a question on the maintenance of equipment. Okay. If we're re is that to replace equipment or just to maintain what we have? I, I mean, mean, I know it says maintenance. Service contracts. Okay. Con okay. serv they service contracts. We have a contract for maintenance on our contract. Oh, I see. A 30 oh, okay. rates okay. come in and they fix it and stuff like that. What else we got? Service, servers, software. server software. Okay. So it's okay. not like, that right. Type of yeah. Okay, tech maintenance. That's why it's under contractual. Okay. So if anything you under contractual, that is probably, it's definitely a maintenance, it's probably an agreement to do so, because that agreement requires a contract to do it. So whereas if you go down to like miscellaneous or something like that, you see a maintenance of equipment there, it's not there, but if it were there, mm -hmm. that's like, all right, hey, my mouse broke, let me go buy another one or something. And that's probably a generic explanation, but that's okay. pretty much done with that, if that makes sense. All right. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Thanks, sir. Yeah. No? All right. Moving on. Moving on to page five. Planning. Planning department. As you know, we, we keep Jim, who's our code enforcement officer. Right now, I got $10,000 in there. Um, um, we did um, last year have two code enforcement officers on, uh, but um, it only worked out that we had one. Um, so that goes with friends' benefits. We have to put that out there. Uh, and travel, uh, training, travel, and transportation. Jim doesn't go to any. Um, things I do, however, on behalf of the planning department, I haven't went in the past couple of years, but Miami Valley Planning is only workshop, usually about 50, 60 bucks. I have historically went to that. I haven't went the past couple of years. I do want to try to go to that this year because it is a great networking event and also see what other communities in our region are doing for their planning and zoning efforts. So we do get a lot of free information from going there. Um, so that's why the $75 is there, but that's also why historically I've not been used because I haven't went in, well, probably since 2013. Communication services is for his portion of his cell phone bill, ATN is landline bill. Uh, maintenance of equipment is, you know, again, probably not a pretty general thing. Can I do that? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. So, any questions, comments, concerns? I always have concerns on capital outlay. <laughs> capital outlay under planning, that is so we can get GIS software, and that goes along with the capital assets. Because if we go and we say uh, we want a handheld GPS, we also have to get the software that goes into your computer. And what we would do is we'd walk around and we have this handheld GPS and we'd map our underground utilities. And then you take that data from the handheld and you put it into that GIS software, and that's where you manipulate your data. Um, I used to do a lot of work on JS in grad school. It's been about five years. So I have a little bit of experience in that. I just hope these software versions have got too far out of it that I have to retrain myself. But again, this has been in there historically, but we've never ended up getting it. Now, however, 
we are seriously looking at our capital assets because we are sick of getting that dean on our state audit and our capital right. I think we could skip page six and then page seven because there's no leases, lease funds. Yeah, so. I, I just kept that in there for history. Yeah, good. Okay. I think it's good, but yeah, I was like, okay. So we're on to page eight now. Yeah. Cool. All right, general fund expense for parks. Um, out of wages and the uh, parks, that would be a little bit of Howie and a little bit of Mr. Coleman, I, if I remember correctly. Real quick. Parks. With the final budget, I'm going to do some things different. I'm going to put what we call full-time equivalent. So when you see general fund expense out of parks, you're going to know exactly who's paid at that. So if we have one point of view equivalent being paid out of it, or if we have point five being paid out of it, so you guys know who's being paid out of it. It's a quarter of how? That's it. So parks is just a quarter of how. You okay? Use the restroom. Okay. And then we have the seasonal wage employees, so I'll let council discuss that. <laughs> Any comments, questions, or concerns? I'm going to let somebody else talk. Oh. Seasonal well, employees are right. extremely, extremely <laughs> bad. Wait one second. Mr. Lighty? How much money are we saving using the, the uh, seasonal wages as opposed to using full-time uh, well, full employees? Full-time employees are going to require a whole benefit package. Okay. So you're looking at your at your wage plus your benefit. So that's probably, depending on what they bring in, probably 75 80 mm -hmm. a year. Um, seasonal employees are your best thing for your buck. We have a lot of grass to cut. Um, Scott, uh, Becky's father, works, works for the city. He now is our seasonal grass cutter. He stays at the cemetery. Um, we have, we will be looking at, and I will talk to Howie about this, we can hire a company to contract to come in here and do this. I have a feeling it's going to be an arm. The moment they see our cemetery, they're going to be like, we're going to charge you triple because none of the headstones are lined up, it's very difficult to cut. We also make, maintain our parks, yep. all of them. We also maintain our right of way so there is a lot of grass cutting. And it's very beneficial to have these seasonal sit on those mowers all day, as opposed to the more specialized staff that can go out and do road repairs, or do repairs on our parks, or do repairs on our, you know, wherever the case may be. Um, um, did we put a little extra money in this year? Yes. Well, we got 38,000. Cut out completely. 38,000. That's um, Just bring it back to Burl. Used to be. And that, the wages for a seasonal employees yeah. for two seasonal employees, so. and that's Burl. McNabb, he's been with the city now for a couple of years, and that's also Scott, who's last year was his first year as seasonal employee. They are limited to the number of hours a year, and that's 1,500. 1,560. They are limited to 1,560 a year for the um, union contract. Is that what you're saying? Well, what was the health care? Yeah, the, the individual mandate? Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. And they're both CDLs, uh, both Class B CDL drivers. So that should, that's the biggest thing. And we, we, we haven't gotten down. I know I'm the minority here, but I actually enjoy having nice things that look nice. And when I think about the parks, I think about the cemetery. Um, I have family over there. I, I, I want it to look nice. And you know we can go through and we can try to find other things to get cut. I know 38 is quite it's quite a big jump. I mean, were there things that we that were still not getting done last year that calls for this kind of increase? Well, if you look at your all right, what's Scott's range? He is 12 or 1250. Yeah, 12 12 he's yeah. 12 I think he's 12. It's at 38. He's he is 12 last year. Each of those are how many hours? 1576. I don't want to get rid of them. Maybe 1560. Well, I mean, they're going to tell us now. Yeah. <laughs> We're over here talking, but as they look for it. What's he calculating? What if it's warranted for the job? Oh. 1576 at twelve fifty an hour times that by two people was thirty nine thousand dollars. That's two people. Fifteen. They were allowed one thousand five hundred seventy six hours. We made it twelve fifteen hours. <laughs> okay. So, so this is stuff that has to get done. To, to help us keep in code. So we're either using one of our full-time employees and taking that job away or hiring this just to, you know, seasonal work. You take away from seasonal work. and the tier. Yeah. Mr. Lindsay. I agree with Mr. Lighty that the cemetery in the past has 
and I have nobody buried there. Uh, I may be someday, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I like to see it cleaned and mowed, because when I go by there and I see weeds this high, oh. it, it just looks, you know, from the road, it looks disgusting and nasty. Sure. And if we could get some type of, of uh, I hate to use the word guarantee, that the cemetery will look good or get mowed at least once every two weeks to keep it clean. It's clean mowed every day, all week. It's mowed. Pardon me? It's, it's mowed. mowed every day, it's all week. That takes a whole okay. by time one time. So it's done. mowed every day, every week. So with this 38,000, 38, if, if we don't cut that, you're guaranteeing me as much as a guarantee it means in Ohio. I'm not guaranteeing yeah. anything. I don't know. But what's the right. cemetery is going to look good for us. <laughs> You said what you calculated, this covers two employees, two out of tips. Five, yes. And we, how many do we have in the past? Just one? Well, we've had Sometimes we've had zero, and usually it was just one. So we've never had two? No, this is the first time we've had two. Well, this past year, the first time we've had two since, I think, 2001, 2002. Yeah. Well, we've had Scott Rowland. Oh. No, Scott Rowland. Scott Rowland was just this is the first year. So Caleb didn't come last year? Caleb came in. Caleb was only in for summer. Yeah, for two months. Yeah. Caleb Griff comes out and cuts grass for a couple. Okay. He, he comes home from college and he cuts grass for a couple months and then he goes back to college. I think some of them have been expensive. Yeah. Probably some of them are healthy. That's all right. No big deal. I mean, long story short, I, I support this. If that's what it gives you two part time or two seasonal workers that, that we're not paying extra money for health care and, and things of that nature. I mean, I mean, you already mentioned that that cemetery is a monster to take care of alone. I mean, you guys see you guys are spread thin as it is. Your departments are you working on pools and cemeteries and trying to help with roads and leaves. And so I mean, I personally have no problem with it. It's a, it's a better bang for your buck, in my opinion. All right. Mr. Cobb, you had some comments? Do we not have a cemetery crew out there? Yeah, we got a cemetery crew. Then why aren't they taking care of the cemetery? They are. They're called seasonal employees. We have Scott. I mean, Scott does it. He cuts the grass. But our street guys are responsible. Our street department is responsible for the cemetery. We don't have like, a cemetery person with a cemetery title in their name. Greg, our street superintendent, hangs out a lot in the cemetery because of the requirements that go in there. You know, we get graves that have to be dug any time. Could be in the winter. I mean, anytime there's a funeral, it's, it's great. We go down there and take care of that. We don't have a dedicated cemetery to that. Though. We don't have the funds for it. So, I mean, at one point, I was opposed to the to seasonal workers, and I made hay about them. But I will capitulate and think these are the best bang for our buck. I think it truly is. Yeah. I, mean, I agree. Uh, and that's, that seems to be the, the, the majority of okay. the side, so I would side with you guys. That's, all right. And then I had two questions. Is, is, any other questions, by the way? I don't want to jump the gun on anybody. Um, capital outlay, obviously, it's going to be a question on probably all of them because it doesn't say exactly what it is. And I know it's in our CIP, but uh, and the next question would be, uh, Shelter house renovations. Oh, yes. Shelter house Good renovations call. are in the CIP for $15,000, and I have um, $25,000 in for capital outlay that is strictly will, will be used um, for playground for The The $15,000? $25,000. Oh, okay. This is where I want to do the inclusive playground. I pushed that post last year. Um, we'll be working with the Parks and Rec Board that um, had submitted some things that's in review for our attorney, then you guys will get it as well. Um, but um, I've had a long term plan with our playground. I think I've been very responsible with the money that's been allocated to me. Um, we can see it out there. A lot of that's been through grants. So I will, I've already had contact with the same person who gave us these last two grants. We are going to hit the ground running for 18 for so, grants. So that 25, we would see a return on investment within the year, potentially. Um, it, uh, hopefully we get the grant writing and all that done before so we don't have a, uh, an opening ceremony in December. Like <laughs> It's just timing, um, but again, um, 
say playground equipment is expensive as it is. Yeah. But once you get to inclusive playground equipment, it just the price goes up a little bit. Yeah. So I'm hoping we can use some of this money for some matching funds for that grant. Okay. You know, um, if we don't use it all, fantastic. The goal is to use as less as we can and get the most equipment out of it. You know, so um, that's just where we're at with that. And the um, shelter house renovation? That is sure totally all the the that. that. Yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad that you mentioned that. And, I'm sorry, I can look at this. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll let you go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, real quick, I, I don't know if you've got, if you have the survey, Colleen. I mean, I know just from speaking with you guys and, and the ladies at the city building, this place is rented almost nonstop. Keep an eye on that. I mean, so what kind of, what kind of revenue does it generate per year? Ballpark, if you have. Uh, that'll have Emily come here. general fund, I've got it as a separate line item, and I can tell you what we receded. For what, I'm sorry. Shelter House. So in 2017, we brought in 11,000. Eight hundred forty-eight dollars. You said nine thousand. Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. And that's pretty much pure profit, right? I mean, as far as I mean, you. No. Yeah, we got to pay some money. We when we don't pay it to something cost, but we pay to eat it. We pay to right, pay right. Pay but I'm. Um, clean it afterwards, so. Okay, there's a little cost, but I mean, I'm saying you're not you're not rebuilding it every other yeah. month or something, you know. Okay, I, I don't know. I did I did a, a post on this a while back just to see what people thought, and I mean, a lot of people wanted to see something because the one in Medway has a very small kitchen, and I know that we brought it up before, and it kind of got shot down, which is fine. I, you know, I'd like to see new tables and chairs, and, and I'd I'd love to see something added on, just a small section right there with a basic refrigerator and a microwave or something in a sink. That's just me. Sure. So another aspect because it's it's gonna make it more attractive and appealing. It's just gonna make it that much harder for people to rent because it's gonna be so, you know, everyone's gonna be wanting to use it. Well, now, and it's gonna pay for itself. Mr. Cook, if, if we go with that, can I interject? And it's just a suggestion. Part of that fifteen thousand dollars for the shelter house is not only to do the upgrades, but it's also to do some additions for this to make it a little more easier for council. I know, Mr. Mayor, you talk about maybe getting curtains and something like that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, I mean, so plastic cables and that is totally it. good luck with that with me, guys. Have fun with that one. But there, that 15 covers the uh, that upgrade, and also if you guys want to do anything to make this more comfortable as a council chambers. Okay, Mr. Cook. Okay, I have no problem with if you want to add a kitchen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, I think there should be some type of a security deposit. Somebody comes in and checks this place after they leave to make sure it is cleaned. We don't have spilled food in the kitchen area, the refrigerator. Nobody just burns a roast in the oven and walks off. You know, I have seen many cases when coming in here when these tables are a mess. Uh, yeah, we've got crayon marks all over this one as it is. Right. I would also like to see some type of sound equipment put in here uh, so that the people in the back rows can hear what's going on. Not pretty much mic. Do these amplify or just record? They're just microphones. They just record. Okay. Our problem with having a studio system set up is the echo. Uh, you can't monitor yourself and have uh, speakers that we go back at each other just the way the acoustics are currently set up. We'd have to get this carpeted or get it that acoustic to dampen it. Go before you can do that. Mr. Cook. Okay. If if that's the case, then what's it going to take to put soundboard? I've looked with. I've got what Tecumseh's. Uh, this was quite a few years ago with Tecumseh's course, how they've done theirs. Um, it's been a long time, but they were really expensive just to hang acoustical boards in to absorb sound. I, I can't remember, but they were really, really expensive. And I mean, hundreds into thousands of dollars for acoustical. It's not just hanging a carpet or a towel and absorb sound. They're actual um, made for that. They're designed for that. And I can check back into that, but it would take a lot because this whole building solid floor, wall, ceiling. I think that's something that needs to be looked into and I think we definitely need. And again, I'm speaking from the fact that I'm hard of hearing. I've got hearing aids and it seems like most of the three people that come out here are, I will say, senior citizens. So I think we need to improve the sound quality so that they can hear. Do you think having it in a different space, like would it be more sense for council meetings when you used to be in a different space so you wouldn't have to put so much money into making this space. 
That's something to look at because the other flip side of that, and I, I totally understand where you're coming from with this, but we don't know how much longer we're going to be in here. If we do anything with the current city buildings, I briefly had a discussion with some of you about that, or we end up wherever, you know, if we're only here for a couple more years, I don't really feel it's justifiable to spend fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to upgrade this. But you have it. The thing of it is, is we have to be unique, and I agree with you. How do you do that fiscally responsible, knowing you know we are looking for a permanent home, and if we find a permanent home, council chambers will be moved. And I agree with you. Do we look for another spot to have council meetings? But then you ask yourself, where? Church, don't they have the, the earphones that you can use to listen to church services? Is that hooked up to their microphone? That, that's hooked up to their sound system, and it's usually a lot of wiring, there, which we don't have to keep the village here. Right. Tell you what, if I can make a recommendation, what, let's just put the, we're, we're not going on budget for a couple more weeks. So let's just leave this particular line on as is for right now. We can visit in the next maybe week or two. How and I will work on some ideas um, and, and present the best what we can. Uh, without knowing what the facts are right now, we can have a 15 minute discussion not knowing how much things are going to cost. Does that make sense? I'll pick this up. Does anyone have any experience in sound? You Dell, you do seriously? Like what what can we do to improve the acoustics in here on down? In here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We really have to model the wall. Uh, it's just so open. open. That's a lot of technical. You know, it's not recording system like that. Okay. Okay. To go off of uh, what Mr. McKenzie said, it's actually a pretty good idea, those headphones. We we have them at our church. It is expensive though. Yeah. yeah. And they would have to pick up off those microphones. So Howie, I don't know how old these microphones off are or what your system is, but do they is it even possible to get Bluetooth off of these? Not off what you have? Not off these. These mics are four years old now. Um, and they they are supposed to be sound well the early the early sound canceling ones. They're not supposed to pick it up, but this is pretty heavily in here and it's you know, they're still picking it up. But is uh, do we is that fifteen thousand enough to add on a kitchenette? I think we, quotes, we had quotes on. I don't, I don't remember because honestly, we started that. We let's look into that. Then it went into just doing the floors, and then it kind the of just resolved. Expense wise, that's all. I, I think. Go yeah. ahead. Yes. I think if you, if I remember right, you had was Ashball come out, Alec Ashball, to do. And one of the suggestions that was was right there off of that door. I had you know like a, a small area there that would go into another room. And wasn't it like in the twenties? It's in the twenties. Yeah, because you need a holding footer, uh, siding. Yeah, it would right. be over twenty. Wait one second. So I had a follow up on that as well with the uh, extension. Instead of doing that, do Wi-Fi? I've seen some people talk about Wi-Fi here for parties. You know, what would that cost? What, I mean, you need internet. I, yeah, I mean, do we have a, a internet access out here? I don't, I don't know. I mean, because I mean, we have another door, so we couldn't put the router behind that door, could we? No, we could mount it up here. But to, to get internet service here would be a business class, and that's a, that's a sore subject with me on business class. I'm more to get it put here. Yes. I think the minimum is 79 for like a meg download. I think it's over 100 just for seven. Wow. It's not like your residential where you okay. get 150 yeah. bucks. Can we go down here? Can we just buy it for Mr. Livy's house and bring on over? Yeah, you guys have used my hotspot for my house. It's great. great. Oh, wow. So, I mean, I was like, I, I heard people say about it, that might be a good idea. But I'll be honest with you, I would love it because you, yeah, if I, 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 we don't, I can't check, not that it ever happens, but if we have work sessions, it's easier to be able to get on the internet and do things. But, uh, 100 bucks a month, man. I mean, yes. I was just going to say, I mean, unless you were going to say it, I mean, if you guys want to do what you were saying, get some numbers on or some ideas on sound deadening panels and, and maybe if you can dig up what you got quoted on an extra addition okay. and then we can just hold on that. Yeah, we can hold on that one to come back and discuss it. And then Mr. Shammy, I think you had something? No, I didn't have it. Oh, okay. You looked okay. Um, Did you get any restaurant cooking donate appropriate? Actually, I love it. And then uh, for, 
I know this is a different fund. I'm skipping down just one thing to uh, Parks and Rec Board. Uh, I know we have one of their members here. Uh, and, uh, 2,500, I mean. I had a discussion with, with Brandy. We, I don't know. That was a blind number. I, oh, yeah, okay, I, okay. We don't know this is the first year we do I know on the deck they got the Easter egg hunt. Yeah. You know, it don't cost a lot. I mean, you get die. But then I don't know what else they had planned for the year. Um, and then I know there's been a discussion about fireworks. I think, so yeah, I think we should do fireworks. I don't know if that's going to be involved with the Parks and Rec Board. So you guys are Great. fair free to upset if you back. would like. Yeah. 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 Wait, 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 do you want to hear what we were talking about? Oh, most definitely. Just did I pick up? If, if you feel like no, you're just like that part so of the so was was Oh, okay. Was, um, a Veterans Day and Memorial Day walk. We, it wasn't, um, we want to be bigger <laughs> and more, um, well. I walk in every year, trust me, I know. <laughs> and um, the Easter egg hunt, of course, and we want to do, um, uh, for the 50th anniversary of the pool opening, we thought maybe on um, maybe like the third weekend in June that we would do like a food truck rally, have all the businesses um, downtown open, the food trucks and then the pool down there. I don't know how, like if it would cost extra for uh, if we would get do, do you Do you pay the food trucks? I, I, I don't know. So the food truck no? Okay, I've never done a food truck rally. You ask them to come and they actually, um, sometimes they'll donate part of their proceeds back to you. Oh. So if we did that, we would probably put it back into the parts of our funds, but um, those are our ideas so far. So, so do you think that 2500 would cover cover you guys? Um, I think honestly, I, think I was thinking five. Five? five. I was thinking so, five. So with that, then my suggestion would be, Mr. Cook has brought this up tons of times about the, these fireworks, and I've heard him talk about it on Facebook for yeah, that would be great. six years now. So, uh, is that, is that the fund that will come out of? Do we have a cool yeah. fireworks? I don't think that, I, how much is insurance for fireworks? So that's the, that's a question, but Mr. Mr. Uh, Cook. I think when the fireworks, we were looking at what six to ten thousand dollars, including insurance. Yeah, the, I mean they'll, they'll go higher if you want, a couple hundred yeah. grand. <laughs> but no, the uh, the ones that Flight did a couple years ago for our anniversary, it was a six thousand dollar package, and that included the insurance, and, and that was about a fifteen minute show. Well, it was good. Yeah, it was. So t six thousand is not. A, I mean, for what you got, I thought it was worth it. So if we do. see it together. Yeah. Yeah, it would be great. I mean, do we have we have a surplus? Yeah, I, I, that's about to ask Mrs. Harris. Miss Harris. And whatever you take out of the impact your bottom line, it's that simple. The money's there. It's just it's but going this is a good thing to give back to the community. Well that's right. It's I think it goes along with the with your council code sorry to interrupt you. It goes along the line with your guys' mission and it goes along with my mission. My mission for the past years was to improve our parks. We have a park system here, and quite frankly, they're dated. That's why you got new playground equipment out here, two pieces. That's why um, Willowwood Park got new stuff. Yeah. You know? And this park and right. board is going to help facilitate and bringing our citizens out to these events. They're not going to come if there's nothing to look at. I, I don't want to spend fifteen thousand dollars on fireworks when we can no, spend you don't need fifteen thousand dollars on park equipment or an event or things that would. I would love to do that too, but if we can do both. When you're done, when you're done, no, <laughs> Mr. Lowry. What well, I was just, um, then you let him go. I just went. It's just gone. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> go, no, no, Mr. Cook. Well, <laughs> it's just it's gone. gone. There it's gone. <laughs> Consequently, I think I showed oh, Randy God. Enan's uh, fireworks celebration. I think so. I remember. Christian Burke. They had a whole list of events that were during the day. My thinking was, we don't do it on the 4th of July when everybody else is doing it. Exactly. You know, we pick the, let's say if the 4th is on a Monday, we pick the Saturday. When the business community is open, they're going to gain from all of this. We do the food trucks, the whole nine yards. But where does the money for the fireworks come from? We, we have the well, general fund surplus. I'm going to have you write a check, Becky. <laughs> I remember. Oh, okay. Whatever. Go ahead. What I was going to say was, is, and, and Randy, you'd said this to me, and I think you nailed it. My, just my opinion. I don't know. You know, we've we've asked for tax increases in New Kalau, and we've got them. Uh, police, you know, levies, things of that nature. 
We're, we're not rich by any means, but I think we've got enough that we can take a little drop yep. and say, this is what we appreciate. Let's well, give thank you back. I think yeah, I think, the, yeah, and, and I like what you said. Don't do it on a fourth or weekend when another city's doing it because we'll be competing. Do it on a weekend, like you said, when nobody else has fireworks and everybody comes to New Carolina. Here's a suggestion. We put money in. You guys put money in there. If the fire levy passes, great. We go through with the event. If it fails, it's over. And that was a joke because there was a thank you event. And then my, no well, I do not care. Remember that. It's not a normal work session. It's not it. So we could afford to crank up <laughs> Becky's budget. Six thousand. Our package was. They do the minimum one that they did was two thousand. That's I'm sure that's pretty weak. Yeah. So what yeah, so would you guys? Six six thousand, and I think everybody loves. So it. do you think we should just crank up? To, I'll get to you next message. But you think crank it up to fifteen? Because we do have inside uh, the actual par parks budget. We do have a capital outlay for playground equipment. So and I think we could crank Becky up and do the fireworks and. and I, I would like to see it. I mean, he's been been doing great. And that, and that gets us over the six thousand. Let's say prices went up in the last few years. That gives us the cushion for uh, cost of inflation and such things. So. Yeah, Judy back. Yeah, and then Judy. Miss Bible. If you're talking the fireworks and stuff, I would definitely talk to the people with the fire department in Christiansburg. Okay. That's where I go every year. They have for a little bird. Their fireworks. They're great. Are Let's doing Fourth something July, nice in your July. Right. Tuesday. I'm sorry. Fourth of July this coming year is on the Tuesday. Okay. Do it on so the, we were the either on the Saturday before, or do you think okay. if we go to the Saturday after, they've been burnt out on fireworks? So we, do you feel okay? Do, that, do you need to get a call someone? Do it in June. Right. I know that that's not. You're not going to be able to get food trucks to come out. Are you sure? Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna budget money for fireworks, we can iron out the date later. Yeah, we can iron out the detail. But I, I mean, I, so fifteen thousand for I'm, Becky and for fireworks. That's well, not for Becky per se, but for and that doesn't mean we have to use it all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're right. Like I said, Randy, you're the first one I heard say it a little while. So are you saying fifteen k and we for sure to use fireworks or? 15 yeah, I mean, if we're gonna later. I think if we do fifteen k. We do five thousand for you. Keep saying you, but for the board, and then ten thousand for fireworks. I'm okay with that. Do you have a chance? Oh, wait, yes. Sorry. 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 Go ahead. I think there might be a way. This actually might. Ms. Dinkler may have to answer this question because again, the fundraisers and typically the labor are required for that. For taking for events, uh, is there a way that we can take that and then maybe so maybe she can use the whole fifteen thousand for just. You know, into the park that's going to be invested long term, would it be possible to do a fundraiser through the food truck rally or make them pay a permit to be parked there and utilize that fund to fund the fireworks show? So then, because I think what you know, she's saying is long term, my dad stayed on this equipment back in the 50s. I mean, it, it, this the, that stuff is, is very dated, you know, out there. Is, is there just, I, I think, is that, is that what you're saying? I don't want you to give me $10,000 still give her, her, I don't know, is that possible? Like give her her, yeah, her 5,000? Yeah, I mean, if we just put it in we just transfer that 10,000 from give fireworks. Give her her five. And give her her five. And take our six or 10 or whatever it is you guys want to set it yeah. at. Should be. Would that be? 
And that, I, I think you're honest about it. I, I think you should focus on the fireworks issue. I, I truly do. I think a lot of people.
do the funds that they generate from that drawing help out a lot of the C3 identities. They also have donated to their fire divisions, just like we missed out on the grants for the power costs, which were about $5,000 apiece. Those kind of things could be paid for with this Queen of Hearts drawing. We'd probably have to name it something else. But this is something we're looking at to bring into the city to see whether or not we can make it go. Now, before we continue, I just want to ask the, the question is, do we want fireworks? That's the, that's, I guess that, that's the new question now. So, may I? Get, go ahead. Um, so we still give Parks and Rec 5,000 yes. and then put that 10,000 in there, right, for fireworks? Into a miscellaneous, maybe in just the parks fund. Okay. General, not, not special events, Parks and Rec. All so right. It's not. If we so don't. We still want to have several money to put aside this Let me, let me finish. If, uh, if we don't use the fireworks for that 10,000, what, where is that going to go? Right back, right, back right back into the general fund. Right back into the revenue. Okay, so it's going to be separate no matter what. So the ten thousand and the five thousand is going to be separate no matter what. Yeah. Okay. So now we're basically just trying to decide if we want to spend that money for fireworks or not. Yes. So is it worth for everybody to have a big public event to do something nice for the city? And no, just no. no. I would rather have that ten thousand dollars to put into the parks for a long term goal. Not Are you asking for ten thousand dollars for I'm a year? I'm saying if you guys were to say, I want to give fifteen thousand, give it all to parks for us to do what we want to do with it, not give us five and then decide that you want to do with ten thousand what you want. Okay. <laughs> Because you still got twenty five thousand in capital work. Okay, well, I'm just saying as a citizen, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to spend thousand dollars to spend Oh, that's what right. 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 Like what Mr. Hall was saying, how much would it be for us to get better lighting at our, at our parks? That's a big question. That's a lot of questions. We don't even have signage at all of our parks. Just to get minimal signage, I got a quote last year and it was $2,000. Did you get a quote? Minimal signage. We moved Cutterball. Not okay. a deal. <laughs> no, we get just cheaper. good signs. No, no, I'm just saying. Like, you know, I mean, it's always good to keep it as local as you can yeah. in business. But when you got big capital expenses, sometimes you have to go to the world and cheap. And there's a lot of fine names out there. I'm, I'm saying, like, we allocate it for fireworks, and if, and then if we can come, if he can get his plan in play, well, that's, that's a good idea. Have oh. and okay, stuff like that, you know. You, all right, Mr. Bridge, Mrs. McKenzie, you guys, Mr. Bridge, Mr. McKenzie, sure. we're gonna. Cut, just, just not just getting back and forth between you guys about signs and where to buy the signs. And um, well, there's a component to this, and that's called our, our hourly employees. You know, so I mean, we have to respect what their job responsibilities are. I've had the discussion with Ms. Ms. Mullen about this. Yeah. You know, um, your bylaws are in, or will be on the next. You know, so she's going to look right. over those. So we don't know if those bylaws are in contradictory with our charter at all or our ordinances. So those might be slashed and redone. Yeah. You know, when I was on the park board of it, was you know help you know do these events like Easter egg hunts. You know, you can sit in with me when I'm going through look at what kind of playground equipment we have. You know, stuff like that. So um, hold on, did I get the right tape? Yeah, yeah you good. Hey, you're on camera. Yeah. Oh, no. You're on camera, but <laughs> so. Um, so yeah. Randy, Mr. Bridge. Yeah. 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 Remember, you're on film. What is that? You let out of that word. What? Never mind. Go ahead. Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. It's kind of all right. Yeah, it happens. Um, so, you know, um, oh, get ready to I don't know. I, I, I'm right there with you. I'm totally stoked with the parts for there. Um, I think because it's the first year, we don't have anything to go off of history wise. It's, it's making it that much more difficult. We can give you guys the quotes we got last year when we were researching our own, and that would be helpful. 
Mm -hmm. I just don't want to see the city spend unnecessary money sure. yeah. on a one time event. Yeah. All right, so Mike actually had a great idea if you want to pitch that. Or was it Aaron? Was Mike? I just my thought is is we put ten, we we allocate ten thousand into a separate fund, and then Mr. Cook, if he's looking at Mr. Cook and whoever else it was helping you, looking into that. Uh, I forget what the, the, yeah, looking into that. If if that comes into play and works out, then you don't spend the ten thousand and that. Can be, and maybe we can ask the uh, remember the fire department did the the boot for Colin Strong. Yeah. Maybe they can do that for fireworks and maybe accept donations into it. So that's so we could work on getting the donations yeah. and go from there. All right. So but it's there if you know. So is that are we all in agreement that we want to invest in fireworks with the potential of asking for donations to bring down costs? That's how I, I think it's a. Fair compromise. All right, and yes. Mr. Mayor. So the other flip side of this is, if you guys want to want to separate, Colleen's going to have to find out if we can even add a new line item. Well, I, I think at that point, then we just put it in the Parks and Rec and put a line item it or right. put it in there for that. I mean, at that point, that's what we do. I think. What do we do? Just just put it into the Parks and Rec, even though. The, Under the words at special events now, just add more to that. Yeah, and then uh, just a lot the five thousand for Mrs. McKenzie and her board, and then ten thousand fireworks. I don't think we can. That's going to be hard to manage. Okay. All right, then maybe we put in miscellaneous. All right, so let me tell us what you want us to do, and then we'll have to get and we'll have to do our research on our. So I think it's ten thousand dollars for fireworks. Put it in the budget somewhere, right? Is that okay. what I'm hearing? Put it under miscellaneous. Miscellaneous, and the, or anywhere, and then put five thousand for the parks board. So you want five thousand specifically for parks, and five thousand for fireworks. Ten thousand for fireworks. Because we don't know. We don't know if it's five thousand for parks. Yes. Like okay. Parks and rec board. That's what I'm hearing. Correct. That's I mean, on the line. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, we, what I'm telling you is we need to get okay from the state auditor to right. add another line. Yeah. Oh. We may not be able to add a line item that says fireworks. Well, what he was. Go ahead. So, <laughs> what he was saying was, that if you can't under parks under. Parks and Recs, you've got, well, no, it's still one law. Well, I was talking about under parks itself. There's miscellaneous for 3,000. We just added this on to the special events parks and rec board. We're still going to get verification from the auditor. Okay. Oh, so then gotcha. just yeah. additional add So I just want to know how, how you want it set up so I can, we can figure it out. Once we okay. Can. Well, that, that works. 10,000 for fireworks, 5,000 for parks and rec board. Is that good with that? No. 5,000? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Good question. Do you not want the five thousand? Is that what you're saying? Or, I mean, no. You're not, you're not good with the fireworks. Is that what I'm no, understanding? No, I'm not good. Okay. It's not able okay. to be under but, the fireworks. But, I think my understanding is anything that the Parks and Recs would do would have to be cleared through the city manager anyways. Mm -hmm. So because he, I want to say clear. We're not using that I word. Five thousand dollars that bothers me. It bothers me more that that you would rather have a line item for ten thousand dollars. For fireworks, then give ten thousand dollars to the parks. <laughs> that bothers me. Well, but you was talking about you know you, you wanted the ten thousand instead of for fireworks. You wanted it for playground equipment or swings or, or whatever. Yeah. But we get sometimes we get grants for that, and there's money already set in here for the capital outlay is only five thousand dollars for whatever Mr. Bridge can get donations, but uh, grants for, and then whatever we have to match with. So that twenty five thousand. Okay, you have 5,000 events. That playground that I got out there is about 36 or 48. I can't remember. That cost me about it. Can, can we truly do that? Yeah, I bet the camera. We didn't have to use that. Because that needs some service. We go out. We get a grant. It's another year. It's a playground equipment. It's 100% funded. That's really not a share. So we need $10,000. We need $10,000. And then the other system. There's no guarantee for any of that. Well, there's no guarantee for any of that. But there's a guarantee to save $10,000. Say quotes, for example, it's on new lighting. You would rather have $10,000 set aside for fireworks than $10,000 going to your parks. And that's the part that bothers me. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
Go ahead. We, we're, we're just talking about this. And thank you for bringing that to attention. And Mr. Hall, thank you for the comment you made about the lights. You're not wrong. I mean, there is some major upkeep that needs to be done to our parks. Well, if you want to upgrade your parks, then you're going to have to redo your CIP. Because you right now, you can't. Lights are going to cost more than $2,200. Go ahead. And once it's over $2,200, that's a capital improvement <coughs> expense. You guys do not have light upgrades in your capital improvement project. Nope. So your light upgrade, even if it's a valid idea, it's going to have to wait until next year. Or you're going to have to your CIP. Okay. I'm just trying to, you know just trying to save a yeah. Just trying to talk. Why does it have to be so well, difficult to make? Because these, these are the laws of the state of Ohio that we have to go by. That's why people look at a government budget, they think it's so cut and dry, but there's so many laws that go into what we so can and can't do. So we haven't done anything in the last 10 to however many years to update anything in our parks or update the CIP so that we can do that? I can't, you know, I can answer since I became student yet, and the answer to that is Okay, so I actually have the floor and I'm going to like yeah. give a suggestion. I'm going to ship it back to you. <laughs> so. Maybe we give Parks and Rec 10,000 instead of five. Go ahead and, I mean, if you use it, that means next year and you guys do a good job, who knows, maybe you can get more and we can like start to be a snowball effect. Because you know, right now we don't have this in the budget to do like all these major repairs, but maybe there's some smaller things. And I, I know it's asking a lot. I mean, <laughs> last year they had nothing and now we're talking about throwing $10,000 in there. Plus 10,000 for an event. A one-time event, yeah. but uh, you know, it, it's true. I mean, th there's a lot that needs to be done, and if we have a group of motivated people willing to do it, is it worth ten thousand dollars to me? Yes, it is, because I have three little kids, and it is super annoying when we go up there and I have to check the area for anything and everything. And is that something we could fix within the year? Maybe not. But if we make it nicer, you know, more people are going to come around and maybe it's not going to be so attractive to the people who shouldn't be there in the first place. That, I mean, that's, that's my mindset. I, what do you guys yeah, think? I fully agree with Mr. Lighty. It, uh, we started, you know, upgrading our parks and stuff like that and people will start seeing and coming out and, uh, the drug dealers and whatever I'll say miscellaneous well, stuff that goes right on. right there, so it's kind of tough to... Yeah. I mean, Nuclear Park is the one behind the... Oh, that's a mess. I, I, yeah, I, I helped pay two years ago. I mean, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, with the park lights, I mean, I, I get you, and I think it should be, definitely needs to be looked at, but I don't want you guys to think that's going to be 100%. We, we, we know that, yeah. Yeah. and I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying... Oh, park needs some help. But it, the effort, you know, start there. But like, it shows the effort. Yeah, yeah. let's go ahead and... Because, well, that's not going to happen. What I'm saying is, let's go ahead, if, if, if possible, you know, let's go through the budget, and if we do have some wiggle room, maybe we put that money back into Parks and Rec, you know, give yourselves a chance to actually make some, some sort of decent improvement that the eyes can see. And then, you know, following the next year, you'll be like, this is what we did with $10,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, so this is our game plan for, for next year and actually, you know, make something happen. So we're what? definitely on board with the idea of fireworks, correct? I just want to clear that. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. I'm not making sure. I don't with you, with what, the agreement that we'll attempt to get funding out of it. Yeah, with 10,000 fireworks and 10,000 for parks. Is what I'm hearing? Yes, that, that's what I think anyways. Okay. Ms. Harris, go ahead. So are you at special events? Yeah, we're still for parks. Yeah, we're still. Thousand and fireworks by? Did you just flip no. that? No. no, 10 and 10. 10 and 10. 10, 10. So 20. 10. But do we want to see if we can cut other places to make up for that? Five? that well, this is great. just our first go through. Yeah, so we yeah. can. Yeah. All right. So I wouldn't make a recommend making any more cuts to your parks with the other stuff. No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that maybe down the road other other okay. general funds. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. Okay, so we probably come back to that then, I'm assuming. Okay. When we reviewed it on our last time. So yeah, all right, there you go. When we talked about fireworks too, just to let you guys know, it was something that we were um, wanting to do more of a fundraiser so the city didn't have to pay for it. So the 10000 in the budget, might, we might not even have to use that. Right. That's, and that's the goal. Well, that's, that's and, and, and that's what we do, were saying up yeah. here when you guys were talking right. of the idea of using um, Mr. Cook's idea of, you know, well, here's 10000 with the 
gentleman agreement that we're going to try and get other funding. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, and I guarantee if he, if you guys were the chief trustee, yeah. do the do the boot. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm sure he, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to help. Yeah. Oh yeah, Miss Harris. Do you have no, anything? I, he, he just said, did, did you catch that? I'm just trying to keep. So, yeah, the parks is now up to 20,000. He has our master copy of the vote. Yeah. So we are going to stop what we need and let Ms. Harris. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think that was the agreement, Becky. But, uh, all right, so. Thank you. 10 and 10. 10 and 10. 10 and 10. Thank you. All right. Well, thank, I thank you guys both for bringing some insight to all of that, because you're right. All right. So. Well, thank you for helping out the park stuff. It's now nine o'clock. We made it to page nine. Are we doing nine or are we, we stopping? We I, 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 one, more page. one more page. Oh. All right. Wait, wait, real fast, Mr. Bridge. Mr. I forgot to ask any other comments, which Mr. Lindsay said he had one, so go ahead. I had a question a half hour ago on the <laughs> other All right. subject. Go ahead. The, on the shelter house renovations, I know Mr. Lyron has talked, and we talked about it last year in council about building on out here. I think, I don't believe we need to build on a kitchen out here. I think we need that exit door. And I think the fire codes will say we need that exit door because we need an entrance out and an in and out for fire purposes, if nothing else. What, excuse me ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry, but we're short on time here. What, what I would, and we had also talked uh, a year ago, I think it was, that uh, putting like a kitchenette back here, uh, you know, a countertop, a microwave, you know, uh, maybe an outlet or county, you know, the outlets back there, you know, for uh, maybe they can bring a coffee pot or something in or plug their hot plate or their, uh, what do you call them? Crock pot. Yeah, crock pots in. You know, I, I don't think we need to, because that, that expansion that you uh, we have talked about before, yeah. if I remember correctly, that was something like twenty five or thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, it was. I I would not want to spend that much on that when I think we could go with a with a kitchenette in, back with, with, in that back corner, which we had pretty extensive conversations on all, all of it. But then you know it just kind of went away, right. you know. Right. So so I would I would be opposed, I believe, of of putting a room, an addition onto this building, I'd rather much see a kitchenette go in. How much would that be? I think, uh, I think the about $5,000. Yeah, the kitchenette, I think, was we about ten or $15,000. And we were going to kitchenette, we were going to do the working house, because our guys can pull Yeah, out. you know, and you, you can put standard cabinets in, uh, standard, I mean, you may want to go a little above standard on the countertop, <laughs> so it would last. But then, you know, like Mr. Cook said, if we do that, we would need to have a, a deposit for cleaning. We have so a deposit now. Well, I'm at above that. To, so if any of that equipment got damaged, you know, the countertop, the counters, the microwave, whatever we put in, it would cover that. All right. I would set it up more buffet style, like a buffet line with a refrigerator and a long counter and kind of block it off and no no cabinets. Let me ask you this. That would all solid. Yeah, I mean, opposed to cabinets, I mean, and countertops, what about a chef's table, aluminum table? Would that hold up I was going to say stainless steel. Oh, like yeah, 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 stainless yeah, steel. That would be almost indestructible. Yeah. The stainless steel. Oh, they're destructible. Don't get me wrong. They will, but will they last the right long if we had like a tabletop? Because at that point in time, they would have um, storage underneath, I'm assuming. Um, I know washermen sell so, but, but I, don't, I don't know how long they last. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, Becky. You don't want really storage if, if someone's just running out the place. That's just more stuff to clean. Do you want a just basic counter? Uh, it was like a wood. Thing. You can you can even section it off if you want to, and then uh, you know refrigerator, stove, and microwave. I think uh, yeah. Oh, cool. What's the cost it's, on that? Would you? Oh, we'll have to get it off. Okay. I was like, how you got an idea? Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, any other comments, questions, concerns on this page? We're going to finish. Oh, go ahead. Real quick, just I, I mean, I think that's fair. I mean, I would like to see an extra room, but I just uh, I mean, if you if we can set it up nicely and tastefully, so it doesn't look tacky with cords and things all shifted and twisted, well, yeah. and, and give it a year or two and see how it goes before it. All right. The plumbing and everything, but I don't think it can be in that corner next to the restrooms. It has to be over here. I'm, I'm just speculating that. So. Okay. 
Comments, questions, concerns? We got one more page. All right. Lands and buildings. Lands and buildings. This is our city building stuff. So gas, electric, uh, that's um, city building things. Anything else, Pat, out of, what does it cost out of gas and electric lands and buildings? Communication. Is that the layout? It's not the hut, is it? No, it's the, um, where we um, put the trash and stuff. Oh, City building and garage. Yeah, and then that also city building recent in there. Um, we're in a still 1870 copy release is what we have now. Um, I'll be honest with you, uh, we were going to knock the copy release down, but we will be looking at getting a new copier for the office because the one we have it on its last leg, and we um, are in a maintenance contract with it, and they're up there probably about once every month, month and a half fixing things. Right. Uh, so we do need, you need to look into uh, securing a new copy for the city building. Um, all the other stuff, um, maintenance of facilities, that goes into wear and tear of the city building and also the garage. Our hut down there is pretty old, it's aging. Um, even though that we are renting at the city building, it is a commercial lease, so some of the things we are responsible to fix, we just can't call them and have them come do that. So I would be very hard for us to find much to cut from this expenditure, expenditure page, but we're always open for discussion. Com comments? Questions? Mr. Larry? Mr. Mayor. Um, and then Mr. Cook. Mr. Bridge and Ms. Harris, um, we have some copiers up there that we're also getting a great deal on as far as general use and purpose, aren't we? It's saving us money. Do you mind if I say? Ms. Harris and her husband graciously has donated two copiers to the city. Um, we use one at the city building that we just do normal copies on, and then we have the other one that we actually pay for. And what that did is it allowed us to use less of the ones that we have to pay for. I think we get how many copies? 22,000 a month, so we pay for anything over 2,000. So Ms. Harris brought that back up, and then we'll, a lot of times we'll use that for like a single page or two for now, so we don't eat into our 22,000 dollar allowance. Right. But what I, I'll be honest with you, you know, um, as an administrator, I constantly look for ways to save money, even if it is pennies. You know, things do add up. What I'd like to see is us get a color copy, because right now we have that color we have is just black and white. So right now we have individual printers in just about every office that if someone needs to print colors, they can do that. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like it to get to where only me having Colleen had individual printers in our room and then everyone else has to go through that main copier. That way it's gonna allow me to track who's printing and the cost associated with it more. Well, the reason why I had brought that, because I remember you mentioned that before, and I, I know some of the newer council members didn't know that, just showing you guys go that extra mile yeah. on saving money. But I have to be honest, I did not know you did not have a color copy on the main copy. No. That means. I assumed we did. Like, right. These yeah. things. Like, we're not my copier on my, my, yeah. for my you, inkjet. That's what I was about to ask. Like. And um, that's just how we do it. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we really think that we can reduce our overall we just have a central color location printing for the normal hourly stuff. I will retain my printer because sometimes I like to print up that things that are trying to find privilege and I am not sending that to the server, the printer that's sent up to the server. I'm going to send that directly to my office. Okay. And it's going to print right there because I'll be honest with you, sometimes I print, they'll test to it, and I walk away and I leave. All right, Mr. Cook. I believe we have some buildings that are in pretty bad shape. Have we got any money set aside? for either the repairs or taking these buildings down? This is just lands and buildings for our city building and hut. So when you say pretty bad shape, are you talking about like our, our street hut and all that? I'm talking about the, well, that building, the one up behind the old waterworks, uh, the old city building, I understand the west wall of that's got to come down. Um, all that would be taken out of the water. Okay. Yeah. All right, what about, what about the substation? Substation would come out of actually the police if it comes out of it. It is a police facility. Now, that's something we can look into because I agree with you. Um, so, I've already had a discussion with Chief Deputy Russell to either relocate our share of substation to the cemetery or bring them actually into the city building itself. If we do that, we close the substation and then um, the fire department can use that for a mobile as storage. Um, but eventually, the sub substation will happen. What about putting an extra amount of money in at least a little bit each year in regards to Madison Street School? You know, we've, we've tossed this thing around for God knows how many years. If we put a few bucks in every year, it might have been a little bit smaller bullet to bite when it comes down. And there is some movement underway. 
right now for some help in taking that down. Did you say there is movement? Did, did you say there is movement for help to get it? There is? Also. We're meeting with the gentleman tomorrow. We're meeting at 2 p.m. at all. Oh, I was told 2 p.m. at all now. He's coming in with both. Well, you all have my career on Madison Street School, so I'll let Council decide that. So we we had it the way we should have done it when we were out two years ago. Uh, here's my thing with that. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough call. I mean, it is. I mean, it's the elephant in the room. I think everyone here has a vested interest in this act of calling things out. But it's not going to be cheap. You know? And especially, I would love to have the opportunity to probably go and try to get that same deal we had a couple of years ago. Mr. Alfred. We're getting block tech funds to help cover that now. I don't know if it's going to come again, to be honest with you. I think we had a one-shot deal. Um, but let me speak with some people at the county. I do agree with you. I think there should be something in there. We need to set a goal to get to the town, whether it's 10 years down the road, 7 years down the road, whatever the case may be, that may be. But that is an economic development issue. I cannot tell you how many times we get a phone call with people to buy it and go to details and like, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. There's, well, I there's a vested interest of tearing that down. Having that six acres, the acres, the, I think it's like four acres on the other side of it, and then one of our city employees bought the other lot there that's probably about four or five acres. You can get a small house. Yeah, that's true. So 
last year we only had 10. So. What do you put light on again? Uh, a miscellaneous, and it is 101, 2400, 53410. Office supply? Meter fees. Meter fees. Postage. Meter fees. Uh, that, oh. <laughs> the postage is spread out a little bit in all the funds we try to prorate it. Um, okay. This account, this is the miscellaneous that kind of is the catch all for most of the fees. The postage went up again. The fees are going up. So okay. Our mailers we have going up. So we, we did put a little bit more in that. And that's a guessing. Right. Okay. And then state auditor funds, I just know we just slightly increased that by two grand. Uh, and we've never hit that. We've never hit forty thousand. Can we bring it down to forty so that we don't have to see such a hit for increasing the parks? You know, trying to be deficit neutral here. What do you want? Um, state audit, state, state, state grants grant and audit fees. Yes. Yeah. Can we keep it there and maybe look at maybe your software? Okay. Yeah. I'm. Um, because just because we had a discussion today about the audit, and sometimes they go longer. Yeah. And we don't know how this one's going to play out. And if they said this, you know, a bill that, again, it takes a long time. So for so, uh, computer software, so you ten thousand for computer software. What, what would you recommend? Cut it to zero. No, no. no. Ten thousand dollars for the fireworks, I reckon. No, no. I would. If we do deficit neutral, I'm fine. Five months. Yeah, it's, it's better than bills. Amen. That's fine. Send it to charitable services. Well, it's okay. administrative. So it's yeah, well, it's getting blown up. I didn't get a detail. No, doctors. No, doctors. Tell you what. Doctors. How much you call Mr. Cobb? Oh, we got dogs. Computer operation. Yeah, it's all Doctor. Doctor. Have you seen anything? Where are we going to store it? Chevy Chase? Mm -hmm. Is it Dan Hopper right now? Yeah. <laughs> Two boxes of the tent. Doctor. Doctor. Call him a sick. Have you ever seen Doctor of Detroit? No. Uh, uh, it's Dan Hopper. Uh, it's real good. I just saw it maybe two months ago. It was hilarious. Well, Dan Aykroyd's awesome. Sure the computer software and hardware. Software, hardware. Hard, hard it's ten thousand, right? He said maybe cut something from that, but I just want to double check before we start we, cutting things. That we, don't we, know. we have administrators in that too, so we need to have someone come in. We've had sometimes like Richard Drenner come in. He's a former finance director for uh, who? City. Tip City. And you'll come in sometimes to help Miss Harris with specialized reports. Okay. So, so what I would recommend on that one is if you want to take two thousand away, and then please don't be offended when I say this. It, I would honestly recommend you just leave it. And if anything, and I say leave state audit fees at 42. Uh, I will. And maybe take only a thousand off computer software and hardware. Because, and I say that because um, it sounds like we're approved for the VAP software. And okay. if I have to have anyone come out to help me, Ms. Harris, with that, it probably come out of the administrative computer software hardware thing. All right. Is everything okay? Uh oh. You look concerned. What happened? Oh, God. I knew he was having chest pains. What? Uh, do just ambulance is at Mr. Pop's office. He's having chest pains. So let's get this up, and then you guys can decide right. what you want to do with him. Take uh, what? Does I think we just stop and yeah, we come back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we have a motion to adjourn? Or you just know the call. Did you go over there? You were heading over the house. You haven't seen it. Right. Mr. Bridge, we're just going to go. Mr. Bridge, all right, go ahead. Motion to adjourn. Is that set? All right. We're going to need it.